So today I want to take a minute to talk about HAL. Well, not the HAL 9000 from Space Odyssey 2000, but HAL as far as hardware extraction layer. Um, the way that we interface and talk to the various components and the various hardware and the various um, physical components of the phone or tablet that we're working on when we're working on building custom ROMs or applications um, is handled through something called HAL. Uh, HAL in and of itself means hardware abstraction layer. And so um, HAL, this hardware abstraction layer, is very, very useful. And it's very similar to that API that we were talking about, but it's a little deeper than that. So back in the day, a person that was going to write a computer program didn't have such a thing as HAL. So the person writing a computer program, for instance, for like a older, older systems, like you know, way back before Commodore 64 and stuff like that, they actually had to write uh, their own program to interface with things like the uh, whatever medium of drive, tape drive that they had. And they had to write their own interface to, in, to literally to um, work with things like the keyboard and joysticks and, and the monitor itself. They had to write every little part of everything into their code to make anything work. This is a little cumbersome. And also, it made for some very unique uh, operating uh, systems and very unique uh, you know, programs because everybody was kind of coming up with their own way on how to do things. What the hardware abstraction layer does is it gives essentially API-like or application program interface-like uh, simplified commands that allow you to directly work with and control physical hardware on the device. Now, this is not the same as the drivers necessarily for the device. So you might need other things in the kernel to actually drive or turn on or cause to function uh, something, for instance, like the fingerprint sensor. But the hardware abstraction layer gives you a... Um, a l way that you write higher level assemb you know code and then this uh, code has an interface to actually talk to that lower level code which is used for the hardware itself and so the the example or the uh, definition here hardware abstraction are sets of routines and software that emulate some platform specific details giving programs direct access to the hardware resources so it gives you uh, it says here they often allow programmers to write device-independent high-performance applications by providing standard operating system calls to hardware. So, hey, it allows you to use the call to say, I want to write something to the disk drive or the flash drive in this case for most phones. Um, and so, or I want to utilize, to give some examples here of a joystick, I want to utilize the joystick and so I need to write some higher level code of hey in my game if they move the joystick up or down or left or right it's going to um, cause my game to do something but at the lower level through this HAL it's going to say oh the joystick was moved to the left and that sends this set of um, commands and ones and zeros and bits and everything switches are made and met and this is going to be read and it's going to say hey what this equates to is the joystick was moved to the left or vice versa you want to display something on the screen and you don't want to worry about writing each and every bit you just want to worry about writing how you display something on the screen like a picture or a movie or something like that and you want this hardware abstraction layer to do the ones and zeros and ins and outs of actually putting up little bits and dots and color that matches the color of your picture actually displaying it on the screen. So um, the uh, it says here a good metaphor for is the abstraction of transportation. Both bicycling and driving a car are transportation. They both have 
commonalities uh, you have to steer. They have physical differences, uh, one, you know, how you use your feet. One can always specify the abstraction, drive to, and let the implementer decide whether bicycling or driving a car is best. Um, I, I see where they're going with that. I think that's a, a valid uh, idea. But maybe just to make it a little more clear, we'll look specifically at Android, and that will hopefully give us a better idea. So we have um, different HALs, hardware abstraction layers. Now, there was a huge change when we jumped from pre- Android 8 and post Android 8. So during Android 8.0, they introduced something called Treble, and uh, it completely uh, changed the way that we utilize different uh, how modules and how things worked. And so there's there's pretty much two different uh, ways to look at this. But uh, perhaps what would be good would uh, we'll just grab uh, how. Um, hardware abstraction layer, and we'll just grab some images here that I think might be useful for us. And so we'll just open this in a new tab so we can see it a little bigger here, and we'll plus this up, make it easier for you to read. So we have, you know, things like at the application, you have your dialer, and then you have your application framework, which is the, um, you know, activity manager, and then you have your libraries that work with the audio for making sure that that, you know, phone that you dialed actually displays something. But all of that needs to somehow happen on the physical hardware, and that's where the hardware abstraction layer comes in with the audio uh, or the radio for the phone and the audio for the actual sound that you hear has to actually work with the speaker itself. Now, notice that the kernel still has, for instance, the um, audio drivers that actually, you know, control the audio um, but and enable the audio to work, but this hardware abstraction layer allows you to utilize that um, audio by actually your higher applications writing programs say, hey, I want you to play this sound when I push the one button on the phone. It's actually allowing the hardware abstraction layer to use a simplified version of code, kind of like APIs that we talked about before, to make that actually happen by putting it into the complex code that actually makes the tone on the physical speaker. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And as we look at the various versions of um, hardware abstraction layers and we look at Android, we see there's lots of uh, hardware abstraction layers. We have things like audio, Bluetooth, camera, automotive, graphics, you know, TV, storage, sensors, etc. And these um, allow you you know, to utilize specific libraries and specific commands that are simplified in your programming that actually make the hardware do something. And so uh, you notice here that it says you must implement the corresponding HAL and driver for the specific hardware your product provides. HAL implementations are typically built into shared library modules, these .so files. And I bring this up because these .so files are those files that you see all the time while you're building and compiling your ROM. You see that you have this, you know, camera such and such .so. And this is this shared library or shared object that utilizes these HAL implementations to allow you to talk to the various portions of your hardware. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, there, you can go through these uh, Android open source uh, uh, documentation and look at specific ones, such as the camera, uh, the camera 3, or the different ones, and look at the features that are available for that how. Um, and then also, typically, you can see some really great uh, diagrams here, you know, where you have things like your um, capture request, where you're saying, hey, I want to capture something and then it goes through and it actually does all the complicated code of doing that and then it says hey here's the capture result here's here's what came out 
in the end. And so you can uh, go through these and uh, and look at them more specifically. But here they give the example of a camera app that says, hey, I want to make a request. It goes to the camera how. It looks through all the different metadata, and then it buffers an image and gives you back you know, a picture that you just took. And that's because of this camera how, this hardware abstraction layer, that's doing the grunt work of actually interfacing with the camera itself. Now, it's a little confusing because you still need those drivers, like we see in the picture over here. You still need the drivers in the Linux kernel for Android to actually control things like the camera, to turn it on and make it useful, and it's now available to be used. But you need this hardware abstraction layer. Otherwise, your code that you would have to write in your application would be incredibly complex and have to handle every last bit and detail of how taking the picture takes place. But fortunately, we have this hardware abstraction layer, so we can just say pretty much in our application letter, I want to take a picture. Granted, it's a little more complicated than that, but I want to take a picture. And then it's going to go through here, the application framework, and say, okay, hey, he wants to take a picture. And then it's going to find the right library, and it's going to say, hey, I need the camera libraries for that. And then it says, hey, I need to work with the hardware abstraction layer, camera. Here's all the parameters that I've set take a picture based on that and it's going to go through and do all of that nitty gritty um, hard laborious work and get all the bits and pixels and give that back to you and it's going to say okay here was the raw data that I got your libraries can go convert it into like a picture that you can look at the application framework is going to say hey the picture is ready and send it back to your app and then your application is going to display the picture that you just took so hopefully that makes sense and makes uh, makes it more clear of why we need this hardware abstraction layer. Um, once again, there is a huge difference between how it worked in Android previously to 8.0 and how it works from Android 8.0 and up. So something to be aware of, and that's why it's very difficult for uh, custom ROMs to be built for older phones that were pre-Treble, pre-Android 8.0, um, the way that this whole thing functioned changed, and so people literally would have to rewrite kind of from the ground up how this hardware abstraction layer portion was going to be interfaced with for their device trees if they had, you know, Nugget Marshmallow devices that they were trying to bring into the Oreo and Pi world.